Welcome back to the reading of the Holy Bible. We will be continuing on with Numbers today, beginning with chapter 29 and ending with chapter 32. Chapter 29, first day of the seventh month. The first day also of the seventh month shall be venerable and holy unto you. You shall do no servile work therein, because it is the day of the sounding and of trumpets. And you shall offer a holocaust for a most sweet odor to the Lord, one calf of the herd, one ram, and seven, le seven lambs of a year old, without blemish. And for their sacrifices, three-tenths of flour tempered with oil to every calf, two-tenths to a ram, one-tenth to, one -tenth to a lamb, which in all are seven lambs, and a buck goat for sin, which was offered for the exp expiation of the people. Besides the holocaust of the first day of the month with the sacrifices thereof, and the perpetual holocaust with the accustomed libations, with the same ceremonies you shall offer a burnt sacrifice for a most sweet odor to the Lord. Tenth day of the seventh month. The seventh day of this mo seventh month shall be holy and venerable unto you. And you shall afflict your souls, you shall do no servile work therein, and you shall offer a holocaust to the Lord, for a most sweet odor, one calf of the herd, one ram, and seven lambs of a year old without blemish, and for their sacrifices, three-tenths of flour, tempered with oil, to every calf, ten two-tenths to a ram, the tenth of a tenth of to every lamb, which are in all seven lambs, and a buck goat for sin, besides the things that are wont to be offered for sin for expiation, and for the perpetual holocaust with their sacrifice and libations. First day of the Feast of Tabernacles, and on the fifteenth day of the seventh month, which shall be unto you holy and venerable, you shall do no servile work, but shall celebrate a solemnity to the Lord seven days. And you shall offer a holocaust for a most sweet odor to the Lord, thirteen calves of the herd, two rams and fourteen lambs of a year old, without blemish, and for their libations, three-tenths of flour tempered with oil to every calf, being in all thirteen calves, and two-tenths to each ram, being two rams and a tenth of a tenth to every lamb, being in all fourteen lambs, and a buck goat for sin, besides the perpetual holocaust and the sacrifice and the libation thereof. Second day of the Feast of Tabernacles. On the second day you shall offer twelve calves of the herd, two rams and fourteen lambs of a year old, without blemish, and the sacrifices and the libations for every one. For the calves and for the rams and for the lambs you shall duly celebrate, and a buck goat for a sin offering, besides the perpetual holocaust and the sacrifice and the libation thereof. Third day of the Feast of Tabernacles. The third day you shall offer eleven calves, two rams, and fourteen lambs of a year old, without blemish. And the sacrifices and the libations of every one for the calves, and for the rams, and for the lambs, you shall offer according to the rite. And a buck goat for sin, besides the perpetual holocaust, and the sacrifice and the libation thereof. Fourth day of the Feast of Tabernacles. The fourth day you shall offer ten calves, two rams, and fourteen lambs of a year old, without blemish. And the sacrifices and the libations of every one for the calves and for the rams, and for the lambs you shall celebrate in right manner. And a buck goat for sin, besides the perpetual holocaust, and the sacrifice and the libation thereof. Fifth day of the sacrifice, fifth day of the feast of tabernacles, pardon me. The fifth day you shall offer nine calves. Two rams <clears throat> and fourteen lambs of a year old, without blemish, and the sacrifices and the libations of every one for the calves, and for the rams, and for the lambs you shall celebrate according to the rite, and a buck goat for sin, beside the perpetual holocaust, and the sacrifice and the libation thereof. Sixth day of the Feast of Tabernacles. The sixth day you shall offer eight calves, two rams, and fourteen lambs of a year old without blemish, and the sacrifices and libations of every one for the calves and for the rams, and for the lambs you shall celebrate according to the rite, and a buck goat for sin, besides the perpetual holocaust and the sacrifice and the libation thereof. Seventh day of the Feast of Tabernacles. The seventh day you shall offer seven calves and two rams and fourteen lambs of a year old without blemish, and the sacrifices and the libations of every one for the calves and for the rams and for the lambs you shall celebrate according to the rite, and a buck goat for sin, besides the perpetual holocaust and the sacrifice and the libation thereof. Eighth day of the Feast of Tabernacles. On the eighth day, which is most solemn, you shall do no servile work, 
But you shall offer a holocaust for a most sweet odor to the Lord, one calf, one ram, and seven lambs of a year old without blemish. And the sacrifices and the libations of every one for the calves and for the rams, and for the lambs you shall celebrate according to the rite, and a buck goat for sacrifice and the libation thereof. These things shall you offer to the Lord in your solemnities. Besides your vows and voluntary oblations for holocaust, for sacrifice, for libation, and for victims of peace offerings. Chapter 30. Vow of a Man. And Moses told the children of Israel all that the Lord had commanded him. And he said to the princes of the tribes of the children of Israel, This is the word that the Lord hath commanded. If any man make a vow to the Lord, or bind himself by an oath, he shall not make his word void, but shall, shall fulfill all that he promised. Vow of a maid. If a woman vow anything, and bind herself by an oath, be in her father's house, and but yet a girl in age, if her father knew the vow that she hath promised, and the oath wherewith she hath bound her soul, and held his peace, she shall be bound by the vow. Whatsoever she promised and swore, she shall, she shall fulfill indeed. But if her father immediately, as soon as he heard it, gain, gain said it, both her vows and her oaths shall be void. Neither because neither shall she be bound to what she promised, because her father hath gain said it. The vow of a wife. If she have a husband, and shall vow anything, and the word once going out of her mouth shall bind her soul by an oath, the day that her husband shall hear it, and not gainsay it, she shall be bound to the vow, and shall give whatsoever she promised. But if, as soon as he heareth, he gainsay it, and make her promises, and the words wherewith she had bound her soul of no effect, the Lord will forgive her. Vows of widows and divorced women. Vow of a... The the widow, the widow and she that is divorced shall fulfill whatsoever they vow. Vow of a married woman, if the wife in the house of her husband hath bound herself by vow by vow and by oath, if her husband hear and hold his peace and doth not disallow the promise, she shall accomplish what whatsoever she had promised. But if forthwith he gainsay it, she shall not be bound by the promise. Because her husband gainsaid it, and the Lord will be merciful to her. If she vow and bind herself by oath to afflict her soul by fasting, or abstinence from other things, it shall depend on the will of her husband, whether she shall do it or not do it. But if the husband hearing it hold his peace and defer the declaring his mind till another day, whatsoever she had vowed and promised, she shall fulfill. Because immediately as he heard it, he held his peace. But if he gainsay it after that, he, he knew it, he shall bear her iniquity. These are the laws which the Lord appointed to Moses between the husband and the wife, between the father and the daughter, and that is as yet but a girl in age, or that abideth in her father's house. Chapter 31. The Madianites Destroyed. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Revenge first the children of Israel on the Madianites, and so thou shalt be gathered to thy people. And Moses forthwith said, Arm of you men to fight, who may take the revenge of the Lord on the Madianites. Let a thousand men be chosen out of every tribe of Israel to be sent to the war. And they gave a thousand of every tribe. That is to say, twelve thousand men will be well appointed for battle. And Moses sent them with Phineas, Phineas the son of Eleazar, the priest, and he delivered to him the holy vessels and the trumpets to sound. And when they had fought against the Madianites and had overcome them, they slew all the men. And their kings, Evi and Resim, and Sir and Hur, and Reb, five princes of the nation, Balaam, also the son of Beor, they killed with the sword. And they took their women and their children captives, and all their cattle, and all their goods, and all their possessions they plundered, and all their cities, and their villages and castles they burned. And they carried away the booty, and all that they had taken, both of men and of beasts. And they brought them to Moses and Eleazar the priests, and to all the multitude of the children of Israel. But the rest of the things for use they carried to the camp on the plains of Moab, beside the Jordan, over against Jericho. Only the virgins are spared. And Moses and Eleazar the priests, and all the princes of the synagogue, went forth to meet them without the camp. And Moses, being angry with the chief officers of the army, the tribunes, and the centurions that were come from the battle, said, Why have you saved the women? Are not these they that deceived the children of Israel by the counsels of Balaam, and made you transgress against the Lord by the sin of Fogur? Therefore kill all that are of the male six, even of the children, and put to death the women that have carnally known men. For we have uh, for chapter 15, 31, verse 15, the women, they had received no positive orders respecting them, and it was customary to spare their lives, but these dissolute women were unworthy of mercy. 
Verse 16, the sin of Fogor, an example, the sin committed in the worship of Belphegor. Verse 17, of children. Women and children, ordinary, ordinarily speaking, were not to be killed in war. Deuteronomy chapter 20, verse 14. But the great Lord of life and death was pleased to order it otherwise in the present case, in detestation of the wickedness of this people, who, by the counsel of Balaam, had sent their women among the Israelites to draw them from God. But the girls and all the women that are virgins, stay for yourselves, and stay without the camp seven days. He that hath killed a man or touched one that is killed shall be purified the third day, and the seventh day, and all the spoil, every garment or vessel, or anything made for use, of the skins or hair of goats or of wood, shall be purified. Purification by fire and water. Eleazar, also the priest, spoke to the men of the army that had fought in this manner. This is the ordinance of the law, which the Lord hath commanded Moses. Gold and silver and brass and iron and lead and tin, and all that may pass through the fire, shall be purified by fire. But whatsoever cannot abide the fire shall be sanctified with the water of expiation. And you shall wash your garments the seventh day, and being purified, you shall afterwards enter into the camp. Divisions of the Booty and the Lord said to Moses, Take the sum of the things that were taken, both of man and beast, thou and Eleazar, the priests and the princes of the multitude, and thou shalt divide the spoil equally between them that fought and went out to the war, and between the rest of the multitude. And thou shalt separate a portion to the Lord from them that fought and were in the battle, one soul of five hundred, as well as persons as of oxen and asses and sheep. And thou shalt give it to Eleazar the priest, because they are the first fruits of the Lord. Out of the moiety, also of the children of Israel, thou shalt take the fiftieth head of persons, and of oxen and asses and sheep, and of all beasts. And thou shalt give them to the Levites that watch in the charge of the tabernacle of the Lord. Total of the booty. And Moses and Eleazar did as the Lord had commanded. And the spoil which the army had taken was six hundred seventy-five thousand sheep, seventy-two thousand oxen, 61,000 asses, and 32,000 persons of the female sex that had not known men. And one half was given to them that had been in the battle to wit, 337,500 sheep, out of which for the portion of the Lord were reckoned 675 sheep, and out of the 36,000 oxen, 72 oxen, out of the 30,500 asses, 61 asses, out of the 16,000 persons, there fell to the portion of the Lord, 32 souls. And Moses delivered the number of the firstfruits of the Lord to Eleazar, the priest, as had been commanded him, out of the half of the children of Israel, which he had separated for them that had been in the battle. But out of the half that fell to the rest of the multitude, that is to say, out of the 337,500 sheep, and out of the 36,000 oxen, and out of the 37,500 asses, and out of the 16,000 persons, Moses took the 50th head and gave it to the Levites that watched in the tabernacle of the Lord, as the Lord had commanded. Offering of booty to the Lord. And when the commanders of the army and the tribunes and centurions were come to Moses, they said, we, thy servants, have reckoned up the number of the fighting men, whom we had under our hand, and not so much as one was wanting. Therefore, we offer as gifts to the Lord what gold every one of us could find of the booty, in garters and tablets, rings and bracelets and chains, that thou mayest pray to the Lord for us. And Moses and Eleazar the priests received all the gold in divers kinds, in weight sixteen thousand seven hundred and fifty sickles from the tribunes and from the centurions, for that which every one has taken in the booty was his own. And that which was received they brought into the tabernacle of the testimony for a memorial of the children of Israel before the Lord. Chapter 32. Reubenites and Gadites asked for land. And the sons of Reuben and Gad had many flocks of cattle, and their substance and beast was infinite. And when they saw the lands of Jezer and Galad fit for feeding cattle, they came to Moses and Eleazar the priest, and the princes of the multitude and said Adaroth and Dibon and Jazer and Nemra, Hezebon and Eliel, and Seban and Nebo and beyond, the land which the Lord hath conquered in the sight of the children of Israel is a very fertile soil for the feeding of beasts, and we thy servants have very much cattle. We pray pray thee, if we have found favour in thy sight, that thou 
give it to us, thy servants, in possession, and make us not pass over the Jordan. Moses refuses the request, and Moses answered them, What shall your brethren go to fight, and will you sit here? Why do you overturn the minds of the children of Israel, that they may not dare to pass into the place which the Lord hath given them? Was it not thus your fathers did when I sent from Cadus Barn to view the land? And when they were come as far as the valley of the cluster, having viewed all the country, they overturned the hearts of the children of Israel, that they should not enter into the coast which the Lord gave them. And he swore in his anger, saying, If these men that came up out of Egypt from twenty years old and upward shall see the land, which I promised with an oath to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, because they would not follow me, except Caleb, the son of Jephon, the Sinazite, and Josiah, the son of Nun. These have fulfilled my will. And the Lord, being angry against Israel, led them about through the desert forty years, until the whole generation that had done evil in his sight was consumed. And behold, said he, you are risen up instead of your fathers, the increase in offspring of sinful men to, argument, to augment the fury of the Lord against Israel. For if you will not follow him, he will leave the people in the wilderness, and you shall be the cause of the destruction of all. Reubenites and Gadites promise help. But they, coming near, said, We will make sheepfolds and stalls for our cattle, and strong cities for our children, and we ourselves will go armed and ready for battle before the children of Israel, until we bring them in unto their places. Our little ones and all we have shall be in walled cities, for fear of the ambushes of the inhabitants. We shall not return into our houses until the children of Israel possess their inheritance, neither Will we seek anything beyond the Jordan, because we have already our possession on the east side thereof? Moses grants the request, and Moses said to them, If you do what you promise, go on well appointed for war before the Lord, and let every fighting man pass over the Jordan until the Lord overthrow his enemies, and all the land be brought under him, then shall you be blameless before the Lord and before Israel, and you shall obtain the countries that you desire before the Lord. But if you do not but if you do not what you say, no man can doubt but you sin against God and know ye that your sin shall overtake you. Build therefore cities for your children, and folds and stalls for your sheep and beasts, and accomplish what you have promised. And the children of Gad and Reuben said to Moses, We are the servants, we will do what my Lord commandeth. We will leave our children and our wives and sheep and cattle in the cities of Galad. And we, thy servants, as all well appointed, will march on to the war, as thou, my lord, speakest. Land given to Gad, Reuben, and Manasseh. Moses therefore commanded Eleazar, the priest, and Josue, the son of Nun, and the princes of the families of all the tribes of Israel, and said to them, If the children of Gad and the children of Reuben pass with you over the Jordan, all armed for war before the Lord, and the land be made subject to you, Give them Galad in possession, but if they will not pass armed with you into the land of Chanan, let them receive places to dwell in among you. And the children of Gad and the children of Reuben answered, As the Lord hath spoken to his servants, so will we do. We will go armed before the Lord into the land of Chanan, and we confess that we have already received, therefore, we have already received our possession beyond the Jordan. Moses therefore gave to the children of Gad and of Reuben, and to the half-tribe of Manasseh, the son of Joseph, the kingdom of Sihon, king of the Amorites, and the kingdom of Og, king of Basan, and their land and the cities thereof round about. Cities of the Reubenites. But the children of Reuben built Hezebon and Eliel, and Carathon and Nabau, and Balmion, Bel their names being changed, and Sabama giving names to the cities which they had built. Cities taken by the Manassites. Moreover, the children of Machir, the son of Manassas, went into Galad <coughs> and wasted it, cutting off the Amorites and inhabitants thereof. And Moses gave the land of Galad to Machir, the son of Manasses, and he dwelt in it. And Jair, the son of Manasses, went and took the villages thereof, and he called them Haveth Jair, that is to say, the villages of Jair. Nob also went and took Kenneth with the villages thereof, and he called it by his own name, Nobe. Thank you very much for joining me for chapter 31, 32, 29, pardon me, 29, 30, 31, and 32. Join me next time for 33, 34, 35, and 36, and that actually looks like we will be finishing numbers next weekend. So after that, we will be moving on to Deuteronomy. As always, thank you very much for joining me. I hope that you always come back to learn more about the Lord our God. 
and you all have a wonderful week. God bless.